Okay, I'm Lee Hong Wang um, from Washington University in St. Louis. I work in the Department of Biomedical Engineering. I also have a joint position in the Department of Radiology. A major effort in our lab is on photoacoustic tomography. It's an emerging technology where we combine laser light with ultrasound. Um, in standard optical imaging, we classify into two different regimes. One belongs to the optical um, ballistic regime where we can penetrate about a millimeter or so uh, in the skin, for example, or in scattering biological tissue. Uh, the other regime is you go beyond that by using multiple scatter photons. In the first regime, we have to use what's called ballistic photons, photons that have gone through a, a ballistic path or a straight path. Uh, those type of photons attenuate in strength very quickly. Every, about every 100 microns, the signal will attenuate by 1 over E. So beyond about a, about a millimeter, you don't really get a strong enough signal to work with. In photoacoustics, we try to go beyond that uh, ballistic regime, try to break through what's called optical diffusion limits. So we want to penetrate multiple centimeters into biological tissue, yet still provide very high spatial resolution. The basic idea is to fire laser pulses into bio biological tissue. We tolerate light scattering, we allow photons to scatter because that's the only way to penetrate deep into biological tissue. When light is absorbed, it generates transient heating. For every milli-degree temperature rise, you can create about eight millibars pressure rise. That's really great news for us because we can receive the emitted ultrasound signal. Ultrasound scattering is about a thousand times weak, weaker than optical scattering. As a result, we can get a very good image. However, the contrast comes from optical absorption. So we're combining optical absorption contrast with ultrasonic resolution in a single modality. Uh, we've demonstrated in vivo in the clinic uh, for a six centimeter penetration in human breasts already. On the other hand, we can image uh, at a micros microscopy level uh, for cell imaging, even subcellular imaging. So there are many advantages uh, to photoacoustic tomography. Uh, the one unique advantage is the multi-scale imaging capability in vivo from cell organelles through cells to tissues all the way to organs. And this is the only modality that allows you to do so using the same contrast because we stick with optical, optical absorption as the contrast mechanism. Uh, this is extremely important for translational research. In current practice, for microscopic imaging, we use optics a lot. So we're measuring optical contrast. For macroscopic imaging at the tissue or organ level, we use non-optics. We use MRI, ultrasound, PET, and whatnot. So we're looking at non-optical contrast. There is a huge divide between the microscopic and the macroscopic domain. By using photoacoustics, the hope is that we can bridge that gap. And right now, there are many, many applications being studied for, uh, in the clinic, from skin cancer to breast cancer. And we are even working on uh, brain imaging. Of course, one of the key challenges is to overcome uh, the skull aberration. We're working with my colleague, Mark Anastasio, to try to de-aberrate the wavefront and get better uh, image quality. So we're very excited about this research direction. There are a lot of imaging modalities out there uh, that are really good at imaging morphology, uh, but not necessarily functional parameters or additional uh, metabolic parameters. So the hope is that by measuring all these additional functional or metabolic information, we can diagnose cancer earlier. Um, another big direction this field is taking is monitoring of therapy. Um, so when cancer, for example, uh, is under chemotherapy, the first change is probably cellular. Um, the structural change is going to come much later. The cellular change, for example, like apoptosis, may occur within hours of therapy. But the structural change may come um, days later or even weeks later. So early prediction of efficacy of a particular drug on a particular patient is extremely important. Using our technology, there's potential for doing that. So we have active study pursuing that direction as well. And there are a lot of other researchers in, in this field who are interested in the same direction. I think uh, the technology has grown this far. Uh, the next big step is to 
really demonstrate in the clinic. It has clinical utilities. Um, you know, photoacoustic tomography can not only image morphology, but also images functions. For example, we can image the total concentration of hemoglobin that correlates with hematocrit. Uh, we can image the oxygen saturation of hemoglobin. And so that allows you to correlate with hypermetabolism. You know, both angiogenesis and hypermetabolism are hallmarks of cancer. And so we're imaging parameters, functional parameters, that are directly related to cancer. Uh, recently, we even demonstrated imaging of oxygen metabolism. You know, that, that I believe is going to be extremely important because that's a direct measure of hypermetabolism and without, without using any exogenous contrast agents. We basically monitor how much oxygen is consumed per unit volume per unit time uh, using the hemo, uh, hemoglobin information. Um, I believe this might be a tool for uh, early cancer detection uh, without resorting to exogenous contrast. Almost like every time I give a seminar somewhere, um, potential uh, users of our technology will walk up to me and say, hey, why don't you use your technology for this application? And so there are really probably a lot more applications than we even understand, than we, than we have thought of. Um, so I have no doubt if we provide a tool out there, uh, physicians will find new applications.